we've got Anthony Shout heard around the world, told on the line. He's running for the office of Congressman of the 2nd Congressional District here in the state of New York. And uh, we are praying mightily for him. And told her, how are you doing, young man? I'm very well, Reverend Manning. Well, it's good to talk to you. How are things so been moving along with you. your campaign? Very well. Things are taking shape, and uh, I'm getting out there and, you know, networking with a lot of the local business owners and making connections all over the country to have a nationwide infrastructure to assist my campaign. And we're starting a pack soon to help like-minded candidates. Now, uh, that's critical, but, you know, you know, told uh, you got a major job ahead of you, I can tell you, because the the nearly 70% of the American populace don't even know what the Bill of Rights is. They, they, they don't mm. know. And on the other hand, they don't know that they are being eroded. People are just going to work every day, stopping off at Dunkin' Donuts, you know, in the morning and Burger King at night. And they they really don't know uh, what's happening to our world. Uh, That's true, but, you know, with all the attention between the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street, I mean, there's people on the extreme right and people on the extreme left, and, you know, there's a lot of moderates that go to these um, protests as well. And with, with the past thing of H.R. 347, which actually, um, for those that don't know, that would um, make anyone who attends a protest, whether it's a Tea Party or Occupy Wall Street or any other protest, subject to arrest if there is an elected official within 500 yards of that protest whether the protesters know it or not. Would you and say that again? <laughs> Would you say that again? So people, say, repeat that for us, told. Uh, repeat that. Sure. H.R. 347 was almost unanimously passed by our Congress. And uh, what it does is it makes everybody who attends a protest, even if they're 100% peaceful, it uh, makes them subject to arrest. If there is an elected official, um, I don't know, Specifically, if it's only federal, or if that would include local as well, I, I believe it's it's federal, or maybe a higher lo uh, higher local office, such as governor or mayor or something. Uh, but it makes them all subject to arrest if, if one of those official, qualifying officials is within 500 yards of that protest, whether the protesters are aware of it or not. So essentially, our First Amendment was lit on fire almost unanimously by Congress. Only two Republicans voted against it. And only one Democrat voted against it. That is pathetic. That is it absolutely is pathetic. pathetic. And it's disgusting. It is. But I'm in the Republican primary to win it, and the, uh, the 244 Republicans total voted on the bill. And only two out of the 244 that voted voted no. So essentially, um, there's less uh, than 0.9% of a chance that a Republican would vote against that bill. And that is slightly better then uh, the even lesser chance that a Democrat would vote against that bill when you look at the statistics and the vote ratios. So what I said on my letter that I wrote, my campaign letter, appealing for help nationally, is that the other two candidates in my race, one of them who didn't get the nod and doesn't have uh, much of a chance of staying in the race at all, he has very little to say about restoring our Bill of Rights. And I mean extremely little. And the guy that got the nod, well... He has nothing to say at all about restoring our Bill of Rights. So I said, circumstantially, when you look at my website, and my website is just filled with uh, policies that promote restoring the Bill of Rights, and if you're going to take that statistic of 0.9% or less of Republicans, uh, you know, voting against that bill, I'd said it's a very risky gamble to think that either one of the guys in my race uh, and in the, in the Republican primary would, would have uh, voted against that bill. But if you look at my website, it's pretty clear that you've got a 100% chance that I would vote against that bill and speak out against it uh, very loudly on the floor of the House. Well, And what people don't realize is a lot of times they say, well, he's not in my district. He's not in my state. The message I have for the people that are of that opinion is that my vote in Congress, as this is U.S. Congress, a lot of people tend to forget, um, my vote in Congress counts as much as any other congressman's vote from your state or from your district. We all have one vote. And if the American people want to have a vote, that's going to be one of the few congressmen to at least speak out and vote against a bill like that. Obviously, um, one more vote, it might not stop the bill from passing, but at least the American people will have a voice, and I could help encourage others in Congress 
and help other candidates run as well and help us begin to turn this around. So we'd rather have some shot as opposed to almost no shot. Well, I think one vote, one man with courage, uh, would be able to ignite courage in many of the others. I cannot believe that all those congresspersons, the 244, that voted for this bill, that and would that's make only Republicans 244. So, yeah, I know, know. That's I just know. the Republicans. I, I, just, I know. Uh, I can't believe that all... The Republican Party for answers... Pardon me? You, know, you better pay attention to primaries now. Yeah. I can't believe all 244 of those Republicans that voted for this bill uh, voted for it because they thought it was the right thing to take away the First Amendment rights and to make any American citizen subject to arrest if a uh, official, a congressional official or a federal official is within 500 yards of the protest. My God, that's halfway across town. That's five football fields. And you cannot be protesting in the presence of one that's be that close to a. I can't believe that any person in their right mind would have wanted to vote for that bill uh, because they thought it did America good. There's something going on, told them. Sure, and when you think about it, uh, think about the veterans that recently marched on the White House for Ron Paul. They marched and turned their backs and then eventually walked away. Now, if this bill had been passed before they had done that, you, you're talking about, you know, about a thousand veterans being arrested for, for utilizing their First Amendment rights that they fought for, that they risked their lives, their mental health, their physical health, their, their relationships with their family, to have this Congress light their First Amendment rights on fire. It, it's, it's outright treason. You know, you said also a few moments ago that though you, many people that listen to me now, they're not in your district and Others may hear this later or people that you're addressing in other venues will say, well, you know, I like you, young man, and I want to vote for you, but you're not in my district, so therefore uh, I just dismiss the idea that somehow or another I can be of help to you. But that's not true. Uh, if you're in America, you're in Anthony's Tolder's district, and let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, Tolder would stand for the restoration of the Bill of Rights uh, amid a ton of other things, including Obama's ineligibility. Uh, which doesn't have to be a major issue for him. But I think that when he stands for items such as this bill that just passed and uh, against the National Defense Authorization Act, which the only candidate is saying anything about that these days is Ron Paul, and he's doing it emphatically. When a candidate, a person such as, such as you told her, opposes these bills, you are opposing these bills for all Americans not just the people in your district. And I think people need to know that. Don't you think so? Right, and, and legally, Reverend Manning, uh, anybody in the, that's an American citizen can donate to my campaign. There's no restrictions against somebody from the opposite side of the country, with California, to down you know, the border of Texas, and then the northern borders of North Dakota and Minnesota. Anybody that's an American citizen can contribute to my campaign. And if you want your Bill of Rights back, or at least you want a voice, an extra voice that's going to demand our Bill of Rights back, I'm a good guy to donate to, and I know times are hard, but, um, you know, if you, if you have a choice between a local candidate that's going to represent your district that, you know, is, is kind of wishy-washy on, on the Bill of Rights, but you think he's better than a Democrat, well, you know, what's the sense of supporting him if he's not going to get that much good done? You know, I, you're absolutely right. And just to, you know, reinforce that statement about people from all over America donating to your campaign, I think it's a great idea. And, and people have, they can give, they don't have to give $10,000, they can just give a minimum amount to your they campaign. They give $10,000. According to election law, the, um, the maximum amount I can receive from an individual is 2400 and if it's a couple, if it's with your spouse, each, each spouse can contribute $2,400. Yeah. And, and, and that, of course, would be, uh, would be giving to a campaign that's going to set America free from this tyranny. You know, many of these campaigns, many of these leaders now, Gingrich has a, uh, I think it's uh, Sheldon Adelson out in uh, Las Vegas. And uh, Santorum has Foster Freeze. I'm not sure where he's from. And uh, Mitt Romney, of course, has got his own source of income, but he's got a super PAC as well. And they're donating tons of money to people who are not effectively going to win and in many ways are not going to change the dialogue in this nation. But I would, and, right. and, and people, are, people are supporting those campaigns with small donations as well. 
But you know, you're right. You are right that given to your campaign, people uh, would be given to someone who can effectively go to Washington and do something about the uh, right. uh, what's what's happened, what's happened with the erosion of our, our Bill of Rights and our nation right. being taken away from us as American citizens. Sure, and if people want to help, and I understand it's hard times. I'm a financial consultant. I, I hear it every day, people all over the country. You can give your time also, and all it costs you is, is your time. You don't have to spend a penny to help me, but if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, if you like my fan page, Anthony Tolda for Congress, if you're a friend of mine on my personal page, Anthony Tolda, you can share my links, and somebody that sees one of my links or, or my website links, that person might donate. So someone that spends nothing could essentially help me raise $2,400 just by sharing a link. Tolda, um, you know, the, uh, you're, you're a young man. And I believe you were raised up in the Catholic tradition. Is that right? Or, or were you? Uh, no, actually, I was raised Lutheran, which is quite fitting for my rebellious nature, if <laughs> anybody knows how Lutheranism start. <laughs> started. rather. The Lutherans and the Catholics have been at one another's uh, odds at one another for the last 500 years. But you know, this whole matter is swirling around now that Santorum has picked up on uh, the religious fervor and the moral fer fer fervor, and he's been uh, able to get a lot of people interested in uh, in his campaign, mainly because he is trying to bring a sense of spirituality back to um, back to the, uh, our candidates, you know. But I want people to know about you. I mean, they need to see the fervor that you have, and the commitment and the morality that you have. And you all talk to people about that as well. You know, let them know. Uh, where you stand on those issues? Well, absolutely. I mean, I, I was raised Christian, but I don't seek to impose that on anybody in this nation. But I also am very concerned about the double standards I see in this nation, um, you know, in regards to, you know, propping up other religions or, um, you know, the, the general public or the media being kinder to other religions and uh, mocking Christianity. In fact, you know, we all know it's no secret Obama has mocked Christianity quite often. Absolutely. Uh, you know, saying that conservatives are bitter and they cling to their guns and their Bibles. I mean, how dare he? And, and how dare the American people allow this man to remain in office just for that statement alone, regardless of his ineligibility? What, what would you, I mean, how would you think about jobs? And would you, what committees would you want to serve on and, 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 uh, to try to turn our economy around? Uh, well, I be believe I, I would be the best suited for House Financial Services. Okay. All right. Because um, you, you have that background, obviously, so that would fit well with where you are. Right. I mean, somebody somebody has to replace Ron Paul's job on that board after he wins the presidency and, and take Ben Bernanke to task or whoever, whomever winds up, um, you know, having the answer for the Federal Reserve at that point, because I, I firmly believe Ron Paul is going to win. Um, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I pray he does win. And if he does, someone's going to need to uh, take his place. And I obviously, they wouldn't make me um, the head of the financial services, but I would at least be on the committee and, um, you know, be able to take these banksters, uh, which is a, a mixture of the word banker and, and gangster. Somebody needs to take these bankers to task on, uh, banksters to task on that committee. Well, you know, I, I look I'm forward to doing it. You know, I'm not sure that I share your belief that Ron Paul is going to win. I think he's already won to some degree. I think he's raised the argument in a large number of ways, but he's also demonstrated how perverted the, the, the political system is. Uh, he's remained consistent. Uh, he has got an authentic, if you will, uh, group of grassroots supporters. <laughs> And, and and most of the others, except Rick Santorum, is probably will be closer to Ron Paul in that regard. But the others have all got these major banksters, as you if you will, that are trying to buy the office. But Ron Paul really really does have a grassroots organization, and he is running a campaign the old fashioned way when we used to believe in politics. So I and that is a Christian. Yeah, in that regard, I think he's already won. And if you look at that, who has how many delegates, and again, a lot of these delegates are tentative, but in regards to the tentative numbers, he's second in delegates, only to Mitt Romney. And we all know um, anybody that truly is aligned with conservative values or even uh, remotely um, aligned in, in somewhat of a, a way with conservative values is not looking at Mitt Romney for answers. And, but we have to also remember, whoever does win this, when all is said and done, even if I'm you know, dead wrong on, on uh, my pick and, and what I believe, 
um, no matter who wins, they're going to be a rock thrower against this machine. He's got uh, Obama's got almost a billion dollars raised, and by the end of this, he very well could be up to a two billion dollar mark. Uh, told I want everybody to give you to give everybody your Facebook information again, your website. Don't you give that information out one more time, and then we have a couple of minutes thereafter. Tell me what's going to happen tonight with Super Tuesday, and does it mean anything at all? But give us your information oh. so people can contact you. I think sure. you've already said, laid it out today that people don't have to be in your district to either support or volunteer or to help you. That a, a gift to you and support for you is a gift for America because you're going to be standing for, for, the, for the rights that spread across uh, county and state lines. So give us that information once again, Tolda. Sure. Um, Anthony Tolda on Facebook. That's my personal page, but there's a ton of campaign stuff on there as well. The fan page is Anthony Tolda for Congress. The website where people could donate via uh, PayPal or Pyrex um, is tolda2012.com, and that name is spelled T like Tango, O like Oscar, L like Lima, D like Delta, A like Alpha. Tolda2012.com. Now, and my, go ahead, I'm my sorry. My prediction for Super Tuesday, um, I think that Newt is going to drop out quickly after Super Tuesday. I don't think he's going to perform very well at all. And that's about as much as I think I could accurately predict. What is Romney going to win Ohio? Um, just a guess. I'm not asking I, you to make any, you know, prophetic predictions here. Just what do you, what's, you know, what do you smell out there? Well, I hope he doesn't. I don't think he deserves to win a single state. I think he is, uh, you know, he's the granddaddy of Obamacare. So how any self-respecting Republican could vote for the man is beyond me. Uh, but we do live in a strange world and is looking more like 1984, where two plus two equals five. So you have all these two plus two equals five establishment Republicans running out there to vote for Romney, um, even though he's the granddaddy of Obamacare. It's totally backwards, but, um, you know, we're, we're seeming to come more and more towards an upside-down world every day, and I'm trying to, to, to fight to keep this world right side up or at least try to, try, try to return to it or slow down the process the best I can. Tolda, thank you so very much for chiming in today. We look forward to being with you next Tuesday right thank here at the same right, time on the Manning Report. And should you something breaks, if you want to chime in tomorrow, I'll give you some time tomorrow if you want to evaluate what happens if Ron Paul makes a, make, uh, uh, makes a major move or something you want to promote tomorrow. Just chime in. Let me know. Call Elizabeth, let her know. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow. We're not to wait till next Tuesday. Excellent. Will do. All right. That was right. That was Anthony Toll, everybody, running for Congress. He's a fine young man. I've known him now for nearly three years, four years going on now. Fine young man. I wholeheartedly endorse him, and I'd love to see him go to Congress. I would. I think he's committed. I think he believes what he says and says what he believes. The problem is he's, you know, they, they may try to kick him out his first year there, but I think he'd stay uh, should that be the, 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 the issue. But uh, I, I wholeheartedly support him, and he's right. You don't have to live in his district to be able to support him financially or to volunteer. I think Noreen Adams said she was going to do some volunteer work for him. She lives up, up there in Boston. So um, go ahead now and go to his website, his Facebook page. See what you can do and make a donation to him. I think would be a good thing. You'd cheer his heart in doing so. And, uh, and you might want to give him a call and see if there's somehow you can work with him. You know, a number of you people that listen to be a political strategist, I know because I talk to you. you. You run your politics past me all the time. Of course, I always shoot you down. But that having been said, you know something about politics. You know something about this nation. And, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, and I think that you might work well with, with Tolda, working with him. Don't be afraid to call him up and say, listen, I want to work with you. Uh, how can I help? How can I help organize? Can I organize a phone bank campaign? Can I organize a mailing campaign? Can I handle, you know, your emails? Can I handle computer work for you? Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. And I think you'll do America a great service.